Good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate everybody uh, taking the time to come out and visit with us this afternoon. And I appreciate my colleagues and special guests that will be introduced in a little bit joining us here today. Uh, one of the folks who's not here is Hector Garza, who's uh, uh, one of the leaders at the uh, Border Patrol Union. He is unfortunately stuck at Reagan National Airport, which many of us have had happen before. Uh, he'll hope to try to make it by the end of this, but uh, if not, we'll be able to speak about what he's talking about. We have a crisis at our border, and it's time for Congress to address it. Rather than do our job, Democrats choose to make outrageous claims, like our colleague, Ms. Ocasio-Cortez, suggesting that the president is running concentration camps. This is offensive to Jews, offensive to CBP, to the migrants being cared for by Border Patrol, and offensive to all Texans and Americans who know there is an actual problem, and my Democrat colleagues would rather callously politicize the issue rather than work together to solve it. Border Patrol has performed 3,000 rescues this fiscal year, including just a couple of weeks ago in Laredo, Texas, when they rescued 14 migrants who were locked inside a horse trailer that was 123.8 degrees inside with no ventilation and no exit. Or when they coordinated with the United States Marines to launch a helicopter search and rescue mission for an Indian mother and her seven and eight-year-old daughters. They saved the mother and the oldest child, but the seven-year-old's body was dumped in the desert by smugglers who care more about profit than the lives of women and children who are being exploited. And CBB is doing this in the face of a crisis caused by the willful blindness of Democrats and unfortunately too many Republicans. Total apprehensions increased from 51,000 in October of last year to 144,000 in May. That's apprehensions. That's not talking about those who have not been apprehended. May was the third consecutive month in which apprehensions topped 100,000 and the highest one month total in 13 years. Over 5,000 migrants have been quarantined by ICE officials due to exposure to contagious diseases. But agencies like HHS will soon run out of funding and is starting to cut services. Even the New York Times agrees there's a crisis, writing on June 6th that, quote, in short, it is time for Congress to stop dithering and pass emergency funding to deal with this nightmare. This is the New York Times, ladies and gentlemen. It's a crisis involving the worst form of criminal enterprise. The Reynosa faction of the Gulf Cartel, the Cartel del Noreste, Los Zetas, and the Sinaloa Cartels, to name a few, trafficking in human beings for profit, while the most powerful nation in the history of the world buries its head in the sand. Cartels are making hundreds of millions of dollars and they are extorting human beings in the process, holding people in stash houses for ransom. One study estimated these cartels made $2 billion in 2018, moving people for profit. Communities in Texas are being harmed. The mayor of Del Rio, Democrat Bruno Lozano, recently said, quote, we do not have the funds to fund this stuff, this project that is manifested and been dumped here in the city of Del Rio. And you will hear from the mayor of Uvalde, Texas today about what his town is facing. Citizens of the United States are being harmed. Citizens like Jared Vargas in my home district town of, city of San Antonio, who've been murdered by someone here illegally, in his case almost one year ago, leaving his beautiful mom Lori devastated in the wake. Migrants seeking to come here are being abused, lied to, and exploited. Women and children are being sexually abused, as high as one-third of those traveling by some objective estimates. Dangerous narcotics are pouring across our border, 144 pounds of fentanyl, between the ports of entry since October 1 of last year. Enough, enough. Congress should act now. Congress should call up, pay for, and pass the President's Emergency Supplemental Funding Bill. We should, Congress should vote on and pass legislation that will close loopholes in our asylum laws. Congress sh should vote on and pass legislation that will end catch and release while ensuring families are kept together. And Congress should vote on and pass legislation 
that will ensure the safe return of unaccompanied children to their home countries. Until we have addressed the border crisis legitimately, until we have addressed the border crisis legitimately, Congress should not be conducting business as usual. That is why we've been objecting and demanding the yeas and nays on votes. Congress should not be on autopilot while American citizens and the migrants who seek to come here are being harmed. I cannot in good conscience allow the House to operate on autopilot with voice votes and consent agreements so members can slip off to cocktail parties and fundraisers rather than doing their job. It's time to do what we said we would do. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Don McLaughlin from Uvalde, Texas, to talk about what they're facing in South Texas on a daily basis. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening. And thank you for the opportunity to be here today. But uh, as Congressman Roy said, there is a crisis on the border. Uh, I invite you to come down and see it firsthand. I'm a town that's 62 miles from Del Rio, Texas, Via Cunha, and 48 miles from Piedras Negras, which is Eagle Pass. Eagle Pass, Texas is getting three to 500 people released in their community every day that are coming across that border by the Border Patrol. Del Rio is getting 140 to 160. Uvalde, Texas has been getting 20 to 30 a day. Uvalde is a town of 17,000 people. We don't have the resources to take 20 or 30 people a day. It's just not there. Not that we don't want to help them, we just don't have the resources or the facilities for them. But while Border Patrol is busy with these family units that they're catching and releasing that, we've seen five car traces in Uvalde in the last two weeks in, that have caused us to have our school on lockdown twice because they bailed out in town. We had eight individuals bail out the first time. We had every law enforcement agency in Uvalde looking for them until we caught them. Took all day, but we caught all eight. Four days ago, we had four more come in, crash, bailed out. We had to put another school on lockdown, and we didn't catch those four. And the lady that was transporting them said one of them had a gun. Whether, whether they did or they don't, we don't know. But we didn't catch them. And we're seeing this more and more. We have trains that come through our community that are stopped and checked by the Border Patrol. They're finding 30 and 40 immigrants on these trains, and they're coming on these trains and in these cars because they've got, they've got issues, they've got warrants, they've got charges against them that they can't get through. I mean, we're seeing this more and more. We have a rancher that lives by where they stop these uh, trains. One last week confronted him, threatened him, and so forth. He couldn't get a hold of it, couldn't get him caught, they couldn't catch him, anything. He stayed up all night because the man told him he was coming back to kill him that night when he went home, when he went home. So he stayed up all night. His grandkids won't come to his house and go swimming unless he sits outside by his pool with a shotgun. And we shouldn't have this 17 miles, I mean, a town of 17,000 people, 60 miles from the border. This is real. It's not something that's made up. It's something that's factual. You know, and then they tell us that the diseases are under control of the health. We don't know what diseases these people are bringing in. I can tell you for a fact that three cases of the mumps have been in, have been, we've had three cases of the mumps in Uvalde and have had to quarantine immigrants in Uvalde. Now, mumps is treatable, sure, but what other diseases are we not catching? This is something that really scares us today. And our citizens in town are scared, scared than they've ever been. And what worries me is it going to take some, a citizen to be killed or an immigrant to be killed or several of them to be killed to get Congress's attention or the, or the nation's attention? This isn't a Democrat th problem or a Republican problem. It's an American people's problem. It's real. And I can tell you it may be happening in Uvalde today, but as these people are being shipped all over the country, chances are they're coming to a community that you live in. And, they, and they'll be coming more and more and more. And we need, we, we need to address this issue. Because secondly, we're setting these people up to fail as it is. Because we're releasing all these people in the United States and we're giving them a, a, a number that says come to the court and be here. Well, 90% or better don't even show up for that court hearing. But at the same token, when they're released to come into to the United States, they're not allowed to work. It's against the law for them to get a job. They have to be on that deal for 18 months before they can get before they can do it, and then they have to apply for a work visa. So we're setting these people up to fail from the start. So I do appreciate the time and thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks for being here today. The good news is we're past the point in our nation that we are calling this a manufactured crisis. The bad news is that we're not doing anything about it. And indeed, this is both a criminal crisis, it's a national security crisis, it's a humanitarian crisis, and it's really past time for us to act on it. Um, the time for faux compassion really is over. 
it's really time to see action done in this house on this issue. I live in South Texas. I represent uh, the 27th Congressional District of Texas, and through our district runs two highways which have been dubbed by local law enforcement the fatal funnel. It's called the fatal funnel because that's often where we find illicit drug trafficking, we find human smuggling, we find all this illicit activity driven by cartels coming up through two major highways that intersect in my town of Victoria, Texas, travel up through Houston and go throughout our country. We have let criminal cartels act at their will for far too long. They have no regard for human life. They completely disregard human life. They don't care about us, and they have complete operational control along the southern side of the border. I was in Mexico just a couple, or in, in the border just a couple weeks ago, and uh, toured with Hector Garza, who is stuck at the airport at the moment. But uh, we were down by the river, and, and when you stand on the riverbanks with the worn paths and hear from the boots on the ground about the trace rounds being fired from Mexico over American territory, or, or the lady in the trailer house who was hit with a 50 caliber round who had to be taken to the hospital, these are the kind of stories that unfortunately aren't making to the news, but are the daily lives of what our Border Patrol are living with each and every day. And I was there six months ago when it was just thousands and coming across the border, and I asked him, I said, what's the next win for you? What's the, what's the next win? What's the next stage we're trying to get to? And I was disheartened to hear that situational awareness was the answer. We're not to the point yet where we're trying to mitigate the crisis. We're not trying to stop the flow of drugs. We're just trying to have enough resources at the border to be able to understand what the cartels are doing, to have situational awareness of what's going on the border. And this is before we were beginning to see hundreds of thousands a month coming in. And just so we're clear, this is and intentionally being used by cartels. They send people up one path to tax our resources at the border so they, they can send drugs and human slavery up another path at the border. This has got to stop. Our inaction has enabled this for far too long. And we truly, truly have to do something about it. Ultimately, this is Congress's job to act. We have to see action on this. We have to let this idea that lawlessness is compassion go. Uh, it's time to have true compassion, pa compassion that cares enough to protect our communities. Too often along those word paths along the river just steps away your neighborhoods. They're affected by these communities and of course up the highways and communities throughout our nation. If we could flip a switch and fix the problem now, it's probably true that for decades we wouldn't understand the effect that the last several months have had on our country. We have got to act. The Border Patrol what they're dealing with, the situations, it's, un, it's un, unconscionable what we've given them to deal with. About 40 or 50 percent uh, in the Rio Grande Valley sector, in the Laredo sector, of our agents who are supposed to be on the front lines are essentially doing paperwork managing this crisis. And so that leaves all these open avenues for cartels to have their whim, to have their way in our neighborhoods across this country. We really have to act. It's time for us to make this a priority. I'm thankful that we've recognized and the president called for an emergency declaration, but we have to treat this like an emergency situation. And we're gonna keep doing everything we can to push this Congress forward on this issue. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm Jody Heiss from Georgia, and I wanna first of all thank you for being here and thank Chip Roy for his leadership on this issue for the press conference and the, the issue as a whole. Um, 122 days. That's how long it's been since the president called a national emergency on our southern border. And during that period of time, we've had 325,000 new migrants, illegal migrants apprehended, including 146,000 family units. And as we see results month after month coming in, new stats, we realize without any question the problem is only getting worse with each passing week and each passing month. And so my colleagues are here, we're joining together, urging, urging Speaker Pelosi to come to the table with House Democrats and address this problem straight up. 122 days, the Democrats have done zero to bring any substantive bill to the floor that would address the humanitarian crisis, the emergency that would address the issue happening with unaccompanied children, let alone the border and the drugs and all that's flooding into this country. They have done nothing to address the problem. And look, it's clear that no one party can address this thing by 
uh, by themselves as a party. But that's part of the problem. We're calling them to come to the table. If there's one thing the American people see and are sick of is that this hyper-partisanship environment that we are currently living in is destructive to the good of our country. And so now is the time for us to do something about it. The rule of law is not a Democrat issue. It's not a Republican issue. It is an American issue. And as long as we continue to turn our faces away from the rule of law and what's happening on our southern borders, uh, the more uh, this emergency will increase and the more negative impact it will have. I also was just recently at the southern border and saw firsthand, heartbreakingly seeing firsthand, what our border agents are dealing with. And it is inexcusable that this country is not addressing this problem straight up. They are being overrun with human trafficking, human smuggling, drug smuggling, and of course the, the illegal migrants flooding into this country. It is inexcusable that we are not providing our agents the tools, the funds, the resources, the equipment that they need to get the job done. I think every policymaker here in Washington ought to go to the border and see it firsthand and to talk to those involved firsthand. It is time for Congress to take another crack at immigration reform. And that's what brings us here today. Uh, the president has put forth a border supplemental relief uh, and, and we are calling on Speaker Pelosi to bring it to the floor for a vote. This is a great step uh, forward, a great initial step to address the immigration infrastructure emergency that we have. It's time that we do all we can do to help those who actually have boots on the ground, and we're calling on that to take place. And it's my privilege at this point to represent a great friend, a great leader also on this issue from Arizona, Andy Biggs. Thank you, Jody. Thank, thank you, each of you, for being here at this press conference today. I thank Chip Roy, uh, Congressman Chip Roy, for uh, his leadership on this. You know, we talk a lot of times about numbers, but I'm going to just take a, a moment and give it to this microphone to a couple of my friends. Uh, Marianne Mendoza, who's an angel mom. Her son was killed by an illegal alien. After which, Steve Ronnebeck, whose son was killed by an illegal alien. You need to hear these stories because you're not going to hear them from the other side, but this is how real it is. Marianne, I'll throw it to you for a sec. Thank you. I appreciate you having me here and um, being in the presence of these congressional members who are willing to speak up for their fellow Americans. My son, um, Sergeant Brandon Mendoza, was killed on May 12, 2014 by a repeat illegal alien criminal who had been allowed to stay in this country after committing crimes. Um, we have a Speaker of the House who tweets out her condolences for the conditions in the detention center, tweets out her condolences for people who are separated from their the children who are separated from their families there is never anything tweeted out about her fellow americans who have been killed who have been raped who have been assaulted by illegal aliens in this country they are encouraging these people to come to the border aiding and abetting them to come by doing nothing they're committing treasonous acts against the american people and they are allowing more and more of these illegal aliens to be mistreated along the way so it's a double-edged sword with her and until she realizes they got a mess in their kitchen in Congress, and Nancy Pelosi cannot keep using paper plates. She's got to roll up her sleeves. She's got to get in there. She has to clean the kitchen. She has to work with every one of these congressional members and get something done because Americans are sick of nothing being done. I'm paying her salary, and every one of American taxpayers are paying her salary. It's time to stand up and demand that they do a job and quit going into work every day and thinking up new ways to, to attack our president. Thank you. January 22nd, 2015, my son Grant was working in a quick trip in Mesa, Arizona. Mm -hmm. An illegal alien came in, dumped a jar of change out on the counter and wanted to buy a pack of cigarettes. <clears throat> Grant went to start counting the change. The man said, what, you're not going to give me my cigarettes? Grant said, hey, I, I got to count your change. At that moment, this man produced a gun. Grant did everything he was supposed to do. Grant gave him the cigarettes. And as soon as Grant did, this illegal alien shot my son in the face, killing him instantly. He then stepped over Grant's body, grabbed a couple more packs of cigarettes, 
stepped back over Grant and, and turned and looked at my son. He wanted to make sure he was dead because if he wasn't, he was going to shoot him again. These are stories that are happening every single day. Um, as reported by North Carolina Fire, since 2013, there have been over 8,500 sexual assaults against children committed by illegal aliens. We have a heroin problem that is second to none. In fact, it's probably been the worst, and it's worse now than it ever has been. 90% of our, our heroin and fentanyl is coming across our su southern border, and 78% of that number is coming across in Arizona, where we're from. 70,000 people a year are overdosing from heroin laced with fentanyl. How many more people need to die? How many more people need to overdose for, for Pelosi to come to the table and, and do her job? How many people need to die for, for Ocasio-Cortez to stop her ridic ridiculous rhetoric about concentration camps? We're, we're not... We're not going to stop until we fix this problem. Marianne and I have been fighting for a long time. Our children are worth it. And Marianne's right. It's blood on their hands. And I'm honored to be with these gentlemen because they're fighting for us and they're fighting for you. You know, I, I, made, a, I made a promise right after Grant died that I was going to keep fighting for Grant, fighting for the American people. And what the American people don't understand is it's going to happen to, to them or to somebody they know at this point with so many people coming across our border. It's got to stop. We have to do something to stop the border. And if the Democrats want to have so much contempt for our president that they won't come to the table, well, then guess what? I've got contempt for them. Thank you. Thank you, Steve Mary. I appreciate your sharing your poignant stories and, and very real incidents of what happened. And I... I'm going to cover a few points before I stop. The first point is uh, one of our colleagues referred to detention facilities today um, or tomorrow or yesterday as uh, being like concentration camps. That really denigrates because it inflames. It, it, it's, a, it's a referral back to, of course, the Holocaust and what so many people went through and were uh, this genocide that went on in, in Nazi Germany. It is the same mindset that says that they should eliminate ICE. This is ridiculous. It's deplorable. It's more than ridiculous. It's outrageous. It is sick. I mean, the reality is um, we have detention facilities designed for 4,000 people under Border Patrol's control, but they have 19,000 people there. Why do they have 19,000 people? Because people like Representative Ocasio-Cortez refuses to acknowledge the problem and help us fund this by bringing a supplemental to the floor to pay for humanitarian aid and detention facility beds, uh, along with other things. This is what the president asked for. He asked for money for humanitarian aid. If you got a problem with humanitarian aid, then admit it and quit saying that it's somebody else's fault that you don't like this conditions on the border. I happened to sit last Friday morning as I flew back to my home state. Next to me was uh, uh, um, a health worker across the aisle was another health care worker. They were going to Arizona, southern Arizona to provide screening, help provide screening for illegal aliens crossing the border. You know, right now, we're broken. There are, there are the massive claims for asylum, and we can't process them all. So we're releasing, we're releasing thousands every day into the interior of the United States of America. But because we're, we, we can't process asylum claims, what you're getting now is some sectors report as few as 6% of the people coming in are even claiming asylum. Because why? They know that they're going to be released. And actually, we keep you longer if you're requesting asylum. And I guess the last, the last point to make here is this can be solved. It can be solved. It comes from the will, the political will within Congress to respond to the American people and the President of the United States elected by those people to solve this border crisis. Make no mistake, it is an emergency 
that one can't even imagine. Even Jay Johnson, former uh, Homeland Secretary, said you can't imagine it. Doesn't know what he would have done under the similar circumstances. And that's when we were uh, seeing 1,000 apprehensions a day. It's almost five times that now. So I call upon the Speaker of the House, my colleagues across the aisle, to join us in bringing this supplemental bill for humanitarian aid at the border to a floor vote. And by the way, I never knew that we were passing votes, in, uh, passing bills in the United States Congress without actually voting on them. That's what's happening. You get two or three people on the floor, they do a suspension bill. Who knew that? I didn't know it. I don't think most American people know it. And I commend my colleagues who are merely asking for the transparency that we vote on every amendment and every bill. That's a real simple thing. Allows your voters to know what you believe in, what you stand for, whether you're keeping your promises. So tonight, while most people in the, around this country are going to bed and sleeping, we'll be here voting on amendments. Because why? Because the majority wants to punish us for asking for votes on every bill. That is outrageous. We should be doing that on every bill and every amendment anyway. With that, I will uh, I'll pass this over to Representative Norman. Thank you, Andy. <clears throat> Mary Ann and um, Steve, thank you all for coming. H how many more angel moms and dads are we going to have to have? How many more are we going to have to have to have the courage to come speak? There are a lot of us, and I want to congratulate all my colleagues. These guys are leaders. They're fighters. Uh, as has been said, they'll stay up till 5 o'clock in the morning. They'll stay up all night. We've had it. It's time to do something and actually go to work. And, you know, I'll be brief, folks, but I've got three messages to the American people. Every day we got 4,500 people coming across this border. We had 144,000 in May alone. This is an invasion. This is an invasion. This isn't business as usual. You know, we've been denied a vote, and you, the American citizen, have been denied representation. To my fellow members of Congress, the only important thing this Congress has, has done is past time. That's the only thing we've done is past time. We're tired of it. We can appropriate hundreds of millions of dollars to outreach programs. To outreach programs. How much for, for immigration control? Where, as has been described, people are being raped, children are being trafficked, trafficked not once but twice. Zero dollars. We know what the problems are. We've got to find a way to fix them. To the leaders in Congress, and this is especially, I think, meaningful. It's time to stop campaigning, and it's time to start legislating. Let's bring this to the floor. Let's debate it back and forth. Each one of these guys behind me will stay up as long as it takes. It's time to fight. It's time to win. Thank you for coming. Ben Klein from the 6th District of Virginia. I'll be brief because I think Marianne and Steve said it best. Uh, but also because it's hot out here. And although it is hot out here today, it is nothing compared to what these migrant families are dealing with at the border right now. It is intolerable, the conditions that they're facing down there. Uh, and it's not just the weather. It's also the drugs. It's the gangs. It's the sexual assaults. It is that journey that without resources at the border to help when they get there, uh, they're not going to make it. We've got 7,000 unaccompanied minors last month alone crossing the border. We've got half a million during this fiscal year already making it across the border. We're on track for a million making it across the border this year. That's unheard of. And they're not just able-bodied working adults anymore. These are small children who cannot make this journey. Uh, it is a treacherous journey. And we need to provide those resources. So we are going to stand up and demand that our colleagues, we do our job tonight, and we ask that the speaker do her job tonight and put this bill, this supplemental requested by the president, up for a vote so we can get these resources to the border that they so badly need. Thank you all very much.
Uh, look, I'm going to try to cut to the chase. There's a gang and human trafficking problem on the border. A few months back, there was enough fentanyl seized in one seizure to kill 57 million Americans. Last month alone, 144,000 apprehensions on the border. And what's the Democrats' response? What do they say? Nancy Pelosi says walls are immoral. Secretary Clinton said she wants a borderless hemisphere. Earl Blumenauer said abolish ICE. And Stacey Abrams, who gave the response to the President's State of the Union speech, says she's okay with non-citizens voting while the crisis goes on. All we're asking, all Chip Roy and the rest of us are asking is real simple. Fix the asylum laws, fix the Flores decision, and appropriate the $4.5 billion to help with the crazy situation that's going on on our border. So I want to thank the, the angel parents who came here. God bless you. I want to thank the mayor for his work in a town that's living with this every single day. And I want to thank my colleagues. But mostly, I want to thank Congressman Chip Roy, who said enough is enough. He's going to step forward and do what we can. All we can do is demand votes, demand action, and try to raise awareness of this crazy situation on our border. And that's what Chip Roy is leading on, and I'm proud to stand with him. With that, I'm going to turn it back over to him. All right, we'll take a few questions. Then we got to get to the floor. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> the question was whether I'd um, require a vote, a recorded vote, yeas and nays on every amendment. Um, we're going to reserve the right to make decisions about what I think is going to be the best tactics to ensure that we highlight this issue. But that's the objective. It's to draw the attention of the American people on this important issue and to make sure that Congress doesn't allow itself to just sit here coasting on autopilot, doing their swamp things and going to dinners and not actually doing the business of legislating the American people ask them to do. That's what we're trying to do is draw attention to that. And by definition, we are now seeing results. We're seeing that Majority Leader Hoyer, and we've heard that the speaker, they're having conversations about what they need to do to move this along. Because if there's one thing that people in Washington don't want to do, it's to be disrupted from the normal goings on here. So if what we can do right now is to just vote, heaven forbid we vote on amendments and have recorded votes. If we just vote in that building in order to draw attention to it and then have recorded votes on these important amendments, by the way, then I think we're doing our job what the American people sent us here to do. Yeah. Hey, Chad. I mean, I'll offer my thoughts. I'm happy to, Jim or anybody else, to, to jump up here as well. But number one, they can walk and chew gum at the same time. We've got to deal with the spending crisis in this town as well. We got to handle the fact that we've got a trillion dollar deficit that we're staring at this year and no willingness in this town to address it. Everybody in this town seems to be all too eager to bust the caps again, both sides of the aisle, by the way. So we need to have a serious conversation about holding spending in check. The president's asking for that. So why don't the leaders here stand up and do their job to hold spending in check? At the same time, we should have a conversation about what we're doing with the border. Look, we can we can come up with four and a half billion dollars to deal with the humanitarian crisis at the border and the security crisis at the border, and make sure Border Patrol has the tools they need and ICE has the tools they need, and we can pay for it, right? We, they got asylum fees. You can deal with uh, transaction fees. People coming across the border, like we're Congress. Just sit down around the table and come up with a solution to the problem. But the fact of the matter is, they don't have the resources, they don't have the beds, they don't have the infrastructure, and they're getting overrun. Our job, our first job here in Congress is to secure the United States of America and to defend the borders of the United States of America. So we ought to be able to do that, and we ought to be able to do that within a fiscal responsible uh, limits. I don't know if anybody else wants to jump in or not. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, my, my understanding is what the president's referring to, of course, uh, are those that are here under orders of deportation. Uh, we have a country that has the rule of law, and uh, we've had people who've been adjudicated who are under orders of deportation. My understanding of those numbers, and we're talking significant numbers, I mean, upwards of a million plus individuals who are under orders of deportation to leave our country because they've been adjudicated. 
Um, I think what the president's referring to is our responsibility to actually enforce the law and make sure that we're uh, doing our job. Yeah, please jump in. Andy. Yeah, so, thank you. I just want to add to that. We're talking about a million people off the bat that have had due process. They've had their case adjudicated. They've gone through the process that no other country gives you, but we do. And you get a million people that have active deportation or removal orders. You have another 1.5 million that have active deportation orders that have not quite finished all of this appeal process that, again, no other country gives you, but we do. And so he's talking about those folks. Then you have another million people who have absconded. We've given you, these people, a, a court order, come back to this day, and they won't come. That's what we're talking about. So when he says millions, that's, that's the foundational base uh, of these millions. They're getting process like you get nowhere else in the world, and it's United States due process, and then they've absconded. All right, we'll take one more. One more. Right here. Maybe Matt has a late media. If the emergency request isn't brought up for a vote, even after you've gone through all the amendments and final passage on the current appropriations bill, are you prepared to continue with the same tactic on forthcoming appropriations bills? Well, it's a good question. The answer is yes. Um, you know, we'll reserve the right, of course, to uh, decide how we're going to approach each bill, but we should demand votes and we should continue to go through this process until Congress does its job. Thank you all. Petrol, damn. Petrol, quick. We'll be right